From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Huh? What? You're John Wesley Cosgrave, aren't you? That's right. Well, my name's Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Oh, of course. I've been expecting a call from you. Or at least from somebody like you. What's that supposed to mean? I expect you're interested in why I've insured the life of a Bowery bum for $50,000. You bet I am. I want to see you. Why not? Any time. Only it won't do you any good. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New York, New York, to the Lakeside Life and Casualty Company. Following is an accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the indestructible Mike matter. Expense account item nine, ten cents, the phone call to John Wesley Cosgrave from my dingy little hotel on the Lower East Side. Item 10, 270, taxi uptown to see Sergeant Randy Singer, Detective Division, 18th Precinct. You get back to that glad hand rescue mission in time? After all, when the lab boys discovered that so-called whiskey was almost pure wood... By the time I got there, Randy, the poor old coot had drunk nearly half the bottle. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I better arrange for him to be hauled down to the morgue. Uh Uh-uh. Old Mike's still alive? And happy. Oh, that's impossible. You don't know the half of it. A week or so ago, somebody stabbed him with an ice pick just below the heart. Result? He said the scar itched a little bit. Two days ago, somebody drove a couple of 38 slugs through him. He said it gave him a slight twitch in his side for a few hours. Johnny, come on now. Now he goes and drinks nearly half a bottle of wood alcohol. Poison. Result? A bit of a headache. Indestructible Mike. Indestructible Mike. Where is he now? Locked up in my room at the Brakeley Hotel with orders to eat the groceries I picked up for him and to let nobody in. Good, good. But whoever is trying to get him isn't going to give up. Hey, did you dig up anything on the beneficiary of his $50,000 life policy, Cosgrave? Only enough to scare you to death. Listen to this. John Wesley Cosgrave, formerly known as John W. Gordon, John Dutchie Gordon. What? Alias Skippy Grant, alias Dutchie Smith. Wait a minute. 18 arrests, but there's only one conviction. Back in 1938 for possession of narcotics. Randy. Ever hear of Murder Incorporated? Well, sure, but this... Apparently they had a subsidiary. Apparently your friend Gordon or Cosgrave or whatever you like to call him was one of the big shots in it. But outside of the narcotics bit, the department was never able to really pin anything on him. But this guy's address is... Here, let me see. 621 East 49th Street. Yeah. That's not only a respectable neighborhood, but pretty plush. That's right. Well, how recent is his record? What's he doing now? Last pickup was in 1944. Numbers game and bookmaking. Charges dropped for lack of evidence. Then, apart from the record, is he still in the rackets? He is. Nobody can prove it. Like in the old days, he masterminded and let somebody else do the dirty work. It's listed here as a, quote, retired, unquote. Well, my money says he's still in business. Well, if you can prove it, the department and the DA's office will love you dearly. But I don't think you will. Every time we dragged in a stoolie who could give us what we wanted, something happened to him. Like what? Jump bail. Well, you should have known better than to let him have bail. One of them poisoned in his cell in the tombs. One breakout. His body was found in the East River. Even one suicide. Like to bet I can't tie him in with these attempts on Mike Flynn's life? Well, now, that's something else again. Uh, Maybe it's uh, something we should have. No, no, hands off, and I mean it. All right, don't get testy about it, John. I like the old guy, and anybody who tries to hurt him has to answer to me. And somebody's tried. (laughs) Expense account item 11, 165. Cab fare to the Smart Modern Apartment Building at 621 East 49th, where the doorman announced that... Mr. J. Wesley Cosgrave was expecting me and to take the elevator to apartment 11B. Come in, Mr. Dollar. The apartment was expensively but tastefully furnished with overall carpeting that felt an inch and a half thick. Several original oils by famous contemporary artists hung on the walls. But it was the man himself who really seemed out of character with the rundown Randy had given me. He was 6'1 or 2, built like a man who spends his odd hours in the gym. Quick, gray eyes, his hair slightly gray at the temples. And his tailor was a master. Do you like it, Mr. Dollar? Huh? What? Well, that is a genuine Picasso you're looking at. And I consider myself very fortunate to possess this original by Salvatore Dali. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, and I'm sure you'll appreciate the excellent view of the city from these corner windows. Yeah. I must have the best, Mr. Dollar. Only the best. Oh, sit down, please. May I pour you a drink? No. No, thanks. I suppose you're wondering why I decided to buy old Michael Flynn the life insurance policy of which he's so proud. I am. Well, it's really very easy to explain. You see, I was born and brought up on the Lower East Side, Mr. Dollar, in deplorably poor circumstances. My early life was a never-ending struggle for survival and for whatever questionable sort of education I could glean from those about me, many of them criminals, who were my only companions. That's all very touching, Mr. Cosgrave. And I'm afraid I did little to lift myself out of the gutter until one winter night, hungry and broke, I wandered into the Helping Hand Rescue Mission. Yeah, I understand you still go around there now and then. Oh, yes, I do, in the hope that somehow I can help the poor unfortunates there the way the mission and Daddy Bill helped me repay some of the debt I feel I owe. Is that the only reason? What do you mean, is that the only reason? You've given jobs to some of those poor unfortunates from time to time, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes, I have. What kind of jobs? What business? That's hardly a concern of yours, Mr. Dollar. I've contributed much to the mission. I've tried to make life easier for some of the deserving habituaries of the mission. The... What? It's the least I can do after so much was done for me. In the case of Mike, why, his greatest desire in life was to be the proud owner of life insurance. Why, I don't know. I do. Because you sold him on it. That's a lie. That's a dirty... Is it? Then why make him name you as beneficiary instead of the mission or some other deserving cause? <sighs> that, Mr. Dowler, was his own idea. And since it made him happy, I didn't protest. I suppose the real reason for this particular desire was his feeling that it might give him dignity. That yeah, might... yeah, yeah. Now tell me something. Where does all your money come from, Dutchy? Dutch? Who told you that? Nobody calls me Dutchy no more. Not you, you're nobody else. Them days are over. I'm respectable. Even educated. I wonder. Look at my record. I haven't been on the blotter since 44, and that was a bum. Mr. Dollar, I make no pretensions about not having a past. During Prohibition and later, I made millions. Yes, millions in rum running, in the policy racket, as a betting commissioner. How about narcotics? Sure, there was hardly a caper in this town I didn't have a figure into, and I was smart. I pocketed the profits, not my boys. That's why I can afford to be retired and live decent. And I'm going to keep on living this way. You were lucky some of those boys, that mob of yours, didn't rat on you. Yeah, but thanks to a couple of convenient rubouts that uh, I had nothing to do with, you understand. I managed to stay clean with the law. And now you're as pure as the driven snow. <laughs> Dollar, if this was the old days, you wouldn't even live long enough to regret what you're implicating, you think. Which makes me dead sure I'm thinking right. I don't know how much money you've got socked away from those old days. I don't care. But from what you've just admitted... To you, Dollar, not to any judge or DA. Right. And I'll never believe that a clever mind like yours, smart enough to keep you out of the pen... Oh, flattery is. won't get you in I there. refuse to believe you could turn down a chance to make a crooked buck. I don't know what kind of jobs you sent out those poor suckers from the mission on, but the fact they never came back makes that look pretty bad. You can't And along came it. Mike Flynn, poor old alcoholic Mike. Where the talk of insurance came from, I don't know, but it was too good to pass up. Insure his life for 50,000 bucks, have him name you as beneficiary, give him a few dollars so he could spend his last days in a happy alcoholic haze... Then rub him out and collect the 50 G. Listen, Dollar, if Mike gets knocked off, neither you nor anybody else is going to be able to tab me with it. And one other thing. Yeah, what's that? As a friendly piece of advice, if I was you, I wouldn't even try. Is that a threat? Oh, Mr. Dollar, you've made a miserable host of me. Come, let me pour you a drink, the finest 25-year-old scotch. And we can talk of pleasant things. For some reason or other, I did have the drink with him. But he knew what was in the back of my mind, and I'm afraid I knew what was in the back of his. Something along the same line as a couple of convenient rubouts. Once or twice, his veneer of education slipped, but all in all, he made a fair conversationalist. Finally, I left. And all the way down to the street, I kept wanting to look back to see if I was being followed. Somehow, somewhere, there was a way to get this Cosgrave, but I could see it would have to be through someone else, someone working for him. And whoever that might be could very well be out to get me first, or Mike. Item 12, 295, taxi back to the Brakeley Hotel, where I hoped the old boy was still locked up in my room. He was. All 
well, Johnny, my, my, I was beginning to wonder what had happened to you. Oh, hey, 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 what, what was the matter with that food I left with you? You hardly touched oh, it. Oh, I had enough. I had, it was kind of dry, though. Kind of dry. There's a container of coffee there. Yes, but coffee just doesn't seem to quench my thirst. Oh. You should let me bring the rest of that bottle along. That wood alcohol? Any more of that would have killed you. Oh, gee, I did have a kick, though, didn't it? Oh, I don't know how you lived through it. Oh, look, now I want some lunch. And, Mike, I'm going to take you along with me. Oh, that'll be fine. Could I have maybe a little drink, too? Oh, sure, you can have one. Oh, that's nice. Good. Of course, the size of the drinks they serve nowadays. Oh, no, just one now. Come on. Oh, that's fine. One will be... Uh, see, oh, there's a lovely saloon just around the corner, you know. Come on. Even sandwiches for those that want them, I understand. Could, oh, 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 these stairs. Maybe we could just bring a bottle back with us to your room if we are going to come back. Sweet, funny old soul. I loved him. And I knew that without me, he'd be a dead one so fast. So far, the attempts on his life had been made by persons unknown. Unless the mission, Daddy Bill. Could Daddy Bill be somehow tied in with Cosgrave's operations? I wondered. I paid the check. That's item 13285. And we started walking to the Glad Hand Rescue Mission along some of the back streets. I wanted time to think it out, if I could think, over the incessant, yes, pleasant sir, shadow of I'm life. really enjoying life now that I have money now and then. Why, sometimes I get on the subway and I just ride all over town all day long. Yeah, yeah, you told me. See, why don't you try that sometime, John? It's really one... See, there's a bar there on the corner. Why don't we just Oh, no, in? no, let's pass that one. John, why do you feel that you have to look after me this you way? You know darn well why I... Hey, watch yeah, that curve, oh, why I'm looking that's after you. It's because somebody's on... Mike, look out! <laughs> Mike, Mike, listen to me. Hey, Can you hear me, Mike? To the... Hey, mister, oh. get a cop, an ambulance. You mean for him or what's left of him? Yes, hurry. Well, what's the matter with you? Use your eyes, buddy. It's too late. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, somebody's going to have to pay for what's happening here. Yes, that's a promise from yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.